Sunil Jana, India's most well-known photographer, is known for his realistic portrayal of India and its people. Born in 1918 in Assam, Sunil was gifted a box brownie camera by his grandmother and he soon became addicted to photography. Shambhu uncle, as Sunil addressed the well-known photographer Shambhu Saha, encouraged him and taught him dark room work. At the age of 13, Sunil's photograph of his study with the Venetian blinds casting patterns of light and shade won him a prize in a contest organized by the Illustrated Weekly of India. He of course started photography in Calcutta as an amateur, but his talent was noticed by P.C. Joshi, who was the General Secretary of the Communist Party. Jana himself, as a youngster, was a member of the Student Federation. Joshi persuaded him to give up his studies in English at uh, Presidency College, and the first project he sent him out on to was to photograph the terrible famine which was raging in Midnapur, 1943. The realistic portrayal of the famine created a sensation and, in a way, sealed Sunil's destiny. What was unique about Sunil's photographs was that they were realistic yet sensitive. His photographs capturing human corpses lying around on the streets of famine-stricken regions and of a woman feeding her child, among others, were used as photocards to spread awareness and raise relief funds. He had the exceptional fortune to work with world-renowned photographer Margaret Burke White of Life magazine. Sunil Jana also captured the most tragic scenes of Bengal's partition. Jana's most touching photographs showing corpses scattered on the road and depicting the plight of fleeing refugees also drew the attention of international world to the callousness of the rulers. Jana was actually a political person. He was a political worker. He was not a photojournalist who was documenting these events from the outside. His political work happened to be his photography. And that's completely ingrained in the work that he did. He also profusely covered the political and social activities of contemporary leaders like Mahatma Gandhi, Jawaharlal Nehru, Subhash Chandra Bose, and Muhammad Ali Jinnah. In the late 1940s, around independence, many of the artists who had joined the party also left, who were associated with B.C. Joshi, people like uh, Chitra Prashad. Ipta was virtually disbanded, or the party affiliation got much looser. Jana went back to Calcutta, and there he set up a studio. It was at this point that Sunil moved away from regular political coverage to capturing, as a freelance photographer, the momentous changes taking place in Indian history. So in a strange way, Jana really represented visually what happened in India in those two decades. And it's a very rare position for any photographer anywhere in the world to be in. He started photographing the city. He started photographing classical dance, which was being re rediscovered at that time photographed um, Shanta Rao, the, the great Bharatanatyam dancer, and also all the big new industry which was coming up in Orissa and Bengal at that time. He's captured India in its various shades, from the freedom movement and the partition to famines and riots and social movements. Sunil photographed people 
from various segments of the society, from peasants and poor people of rural India to urban industrial workers. With Veria Elwin, he went on to photograph all the tribes, which he had actually started doing when he was in the Communist Party. Together, they travelled across India to capture the amazing life, culture and tradition of tribal people. In spite of the anthropological significance of covering tribal societies, Sunil faced criticism for his realistic portrayal of the tribal women. People now, particularly photographers or any uh, social activist, is to really understand how somebody who is aware of his medium and of the life around him, how he used that medium to, to document, record and make an expressive uh, body of art about, about his life and his times who look at the pictures and read the captions and the reflective autobiographical text of this, his final and by far most comprehensive book, will get a better sense of the wonder that was and is the subcontinent. Oxford University Press published Sunil Jana's The Tribals of India in 1993. More than two decades later comes Photographing India, which includes close to 400 rare photographs that artistically and comprehensively capture the India that was and the India that is across the bridge of independence. We are extremely proud of our association with Sunil Jana for over two decades and are pleased to support his effort towards the documentation of India's visual history. I'm very happy that Oxford University Press is doing this large book. This is work that has not been seen for decades in India and it's part of a lost history. I hope it's a fitting tribute uh, to his great legacy.